how's it going, everyone? I just wanted to say thanks for coming. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started here shortly. Uh, before we get started, I did want to touch on a few things. So we do have a few more of these webinars coming up. We have one with Web and API for the automation solution here at Kairos. Uh, and then also coming up, check out our Feature Fridays. So we do drop blogs and videos, uh, other content on the website, one of which is Feature Friday. We go through Kairos, a lot of the features and functionalities, and we do drop on every Friday. They're really quick read and they're really fun to, to look at and get into. So definitely check those out as well. Um, and then while we go ahead and get started, before we do, just make sure you guys ask any questions and whatnot in the chat. Uh, we do have a Q&A section at the end, so we'll be taking a lot of those questions, compiling them and going through a few of them at the end there. Um, and so just go ahead and coordinate those as well. I do have a few other team members here, uh, so you may get a response immediately. Just go ahead and put those in the chat. Awesome. So without further ado, let's let's hop right in. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Kairos webinar series. As this is the first of many Kairos webinars where we'll talk about the features and functionalities that Kairos has to offer, I figured it only beneficial to start from the beginning and give you a little bit of background on what Kairos is about, starting with the name. But does something not feel right? Hold on, give me one second. Much better. Q-Y-R-U-S, pronounced Kairos, derives its name from two different Greek words. The synergy between Keros and Kairos. While Keros was the god of luck and opportunity, Kairos stands for the perfect, right, or most opportune moment. In blending these words together, we get Kairos. Kairos is an automated testing solution to test all things digital. With web, mobile, API, and business process testing, alongside the accompanying browser and device farms across the globe, Kairos is truly a one-stop shop for all testing requirements. Now, without further ado, let's get into the Kairos mobile testing solution as we dive into our demonstration and webinar for today. I'm Suraj Patel, your host. Thank you. So as mentioned before, Kairos is a one-stop shop to test all things digital. And so if you look above, you can note a list of our offerings. What I want to make note of is you see the web and mobile testing solutions there, as well as their accompanying infrastructure in browser and device farm. Furthermore, you can see our API testing solution there, which is already comprised of functional performance and process testing. Um, but accompanying it, you can also note that we have API monitoring and service virtualization there. And lastly, I wanted to make note of a unique Kairos offering in our business process testing solution, which allows you to reuse previously created web mobile and API tests and kind of just stitch them together as well as their accompanying data transfer processes to make end-to-end -end business process tests. And our pillars can be noted there as well. The first of which, as you can see, is making testing simpler. So Kairos is a low-code, no-code testing solution with a form-like functionality. We also offer built-in recorders for web and mobile testing. And what we see is this enables a more intuitive testing experience. In doing so, we kind of reach out to, to more aspects of the testing team. So we see business analysts using the platform, developers jumping on and using the platform for applications and in, in beta versions, uh, as well as testers, whether they have an automation background or they're coming from a manual background, all utilizing the platform alike. And doubling up on the concept of, of testing being this team experience and team requirement, we also offer collaborative reporting so you can see that you have PDF reporting options, email options, where you can simply just email the report straight to a coworker or a team member, as well as you have the download reporting options as well there to kind of organize them as you see fit. 
and so collaboration becomes second nature. Our next pillar that you can see there is making testing smarter. And so Kairos does offer a visual test design, and this creates a smoother testing experience, right? Alongside doubling up with AI and ML capabilities, we do offer self-healing and autonomous testing, which we'll talk about later. This allows Kairos to offload a range of test building and management requirements, utilizing these, these smarter AI and ML capabilities. And also being built entirely in-house from the ground up, the platform itself is a unified platform. So you can see that as well when you're building, kind of executing these test scripts, everything is very smooth and seamless. Our next pillar is making testing smarter. So Kairos does have a visual test design to promote a smoother testing experience. Uh, alongside this, doubling up with AI and ML capabilities, such as self-healing and autonomous testing, which we'll talk about a little later in the demo, Kairos offloads a range of those test building and management requirements, kind of making the day-to-day -day much easier. And Kairos is also built entirely in-house from the ground up, and you can really note that when you're test building, especially utilizing something like business process testing, where you're taking things from different testing solutions and integrating them together, um, a lot of that is very seamless and smooth, and that's because Kairos is built in-house and entirely from the ground up, making it a unified testing platform in that sense. Our third pillar is scalability. It's essential that as your application scales, so does your testing solution. And Kairos being a cloud-based platform with the added infrastructure requirements, scalability becomes a no-brainer. Um, and it's important to, to note that you can actually scale up and down at any given time, and that includes browsers, devices, uh, as well as licenses. And not only can you scale your licenses, which means adding and removing them, but you can also edit these licenses at any point. So if you have different users that want to use the platform or a change in team members, you can always alter those licenses uh, to reflect different user or team member. And having the ability to manage all of that within one solution really does provide the freedom and comfort the testing teams need uh, that have varying requirements due to application scale. Our final and most important pillar is security. As tech develops, security is becoming increasingly important, and so it's essential to note that the entire platform is actually sitting on a virtual private cloud. Kairos also enables data encryption, both in transit and at rest, and is also SOC 2 Type 2, as well as ISO compliant, both of which are industry standard certifications. To Kairos, security is of the utmost importance. So understanding Kairos really just comes down to understanding three core testing requirements. Kairos is divvied up into test building, executing, and reporting. Divulging a little bit more on test building, you can note that Kairos is a low-code, no-code solution with recorder offerings. That synergy with the required infrastructure offering as well allows test building to become all the more simple. In essence, you can go ahead and select a device through the device pool, connect to that device, and continue interacting with that device or your application on the given device, building out test scripts as you interact. And these test scripts are then repeatable, and you can go ahead and execute them live on the device to ensure functionality, or then execute them as well uh, in accordance to other execution requirements, which leads us into the next topic. This is where the device forms become very critical. Kairos enables you to execute on a pool of devices simultaneously with parallel testing options. So that already maximizes coverage in the range of devices that the application is being executed on, as well as the reports that you can see accordingly. And after maximizing that coverage and having all these devices at your fingertips, you can actually scale this up and down whenever necessary. So as releases come, you can add more devices and test accordingly, and then scale down when required as well. And furthermore, you can take all of these executions and these device pools and schedule them to test while you sleep, which kind of really puts the cherry on top, testing across devices with these parallel testing capabilities, all scheduled and running in the background for you to have these reports when you wake up leading me to my final transition, which is reporting. Kairos not only provides detailed visual and data-driven reporting with screenshots and recorded video of the test execution, as well as expected and actual data results, but we also take it one step further in making these reports collaborative, right? And giving multiple options to go ahead and share these reports, allow more team members access to these reports, and allow different avenues of organizing and managing these reports as well. But making Kairos a truly one-stop shop came not only with automated testing solutions, but with the added AI and ML capabilities and infrastructure. We previously discussed the self-healing capabilities of Kairos, known as Healer. With altered locators, that can be a nightmare in regression suites, and Healer solves this issue anytime there's a locator changed or can't be found. It provides users with a range of alternatives, including IDs, XPaths, other locator values that you can then return into a script to provide its baseline functionality. 
In essence, Kairos heals the script straight from the reports, and any time there's a failed script, you can go ahead and utilize Healer to return that script right to that baseline functionality. Secondly, we have Rover. Rover traverses your mobile application like a user, providing a flipbook and a web of the return results. Utilizing the flipbook, you can see your application page by page, and utilizing the map, you can see user journeys and identify traversal patterns, locating isolated pages with added test data management to centralize all test data and visual testing, which enables dark mode, overlap, and contrast testing, the intelligence capabilities of the platform speak for themselves. Alongside this is the infrastructure additions. You can note the browser farms with a range of offerings in accordance to operating systems and browsers as noted. Similarly, we have the device farms with a range of device options. These farms are also located across the US, UK, and India to offer testing capabilities and device connection around the globe, as well as 24-7. And lastly, these devices, browsers, all accompanying data sit on a private instance, ensuring both isolation and security for all users or clients of Kairos. And this infrastructure, as powerful as it is, can be implemented alone without implementing these Kairos automated solutions as an infrastructure as a service. In essence, you can execute pre-existing web and mobile assets utilizing the Kairos infrastructure that you see before you. Though Kairos is powerful, we all know the story of the one ring that ruled them all, and this is very far from it. The platform integrates out of the box with a range of CI-CD pipelines as well as defect management tools as listed. And these features are founded on the pillars of security, with the industry standard SOC 2 Type 2 compliance as well as ISO compliance as previously mentioned. But adding to this, Kairos offers private instances and private infrastructure, with private browsers and private device options as well, going above and beyond the security standards. Now it's important to note that each client may have individualized testing requirements, and as all of our services can be purchased separately and used individually, the true power of Kairos is seen when they all are combined. What you can note here is a diagram of our ideal test automation framework. So as there's different updates or as any testing requirements um, are initially released, it's important to note that the first layer that's being tested is the API layer. And this is validating the data layer of any given application, ensuring that the quality of the data transfer processes as well as the functionality of the data transfer processes. After that comes the validation of the UI layer. And that's the topic of discussion today as well as the demonstration today. Now this can be web testing, mobile testing, uh, or with Kairos, you can also have that end-to-end -end business process testing where you're using web, mobile, or APIs. But in essence, this is ensuring the optimal user experience, right? That functional user journey, making sure that everything that my user is going through is working properly uh, and in a timely manner. And lastly, we have monitoring to that equation for that constant feedback and continual testing. Now, whether that's web performance monitoring, API monitoring, um, a range of those are offered. Um, and integrating those in a with a range of pipelines, defect management systems, placing those behind a codeless and easy-to-use UI, you can see that the power of Kairos extends beyond simply building out tests and executing them in repetition. Before we jump into the demo, I did want to list a few of Kairos' recent highlights, uh, the first of which is being included by both Forrester and Gartner as a top-tier automation testing solution within the market, and the reviews are also listed there and can be seen. Next, be on the lookout for our booths. We have been attending a lot of industry events, including conferences, uh, as listed, and we'll continue to do so as well. And lastly, if you wanted to learn more about Kairos, uh, there's a few links provided below, including the new.kairos.com, which is a list of our new releases, docs.kairos.com, where you can see a detailed list of all of the different testing solutions, offerings, and how they work, um, as well as just the Kairos website to see different resources. We are posting Feature Fridays. Um, which is blogs about the features every week, uh, as well as a range of other drops, including videos um, and other content that keep you updated with not only Kairos as a solution, um, but the testing industry as well, right? And so without further ado, let's dive into the demo. Hey everyone, and welcome to the demo portion of the mobile webinar. So to dive right, right in, the first thing I wanted to talk about was test building. And so what you see in front of you is the general Kairos test building page. On the left, you can see we actually have a live device there that's connected to our Chicago device farm. Uh, it's a Pixel 5a, and so you can see it's interactable there. 
Uh, to the right, we have our step building menu. At the top, you can see a range of action types there. So when you open it up, you can see we have a range of gestures, launches, etc., covering a lot of your general action types. To talk about gestures, that's anytime you'd want to interact with the phone. So you can see we have our tap there, our double tap as well, as well as long press. And then jumping back, you can note that we have input events as well. So that's anytime you want to input anything using a keyboard or any keyboard functionality. So you can see we have our set there, uh, as well as our send text and other adverse keyboard functionality too. But more importantly, we dive into verifiers. So when you test, we do understand that you have to verify things across the screen. It's not very static like that. And so with verifiers, you can note that we have contains and is visible uh, in a range of verifiers there as well, including verifying text, as well as verifying less than and greater than values as well. And most importantly, to handle all of your edge cases and show the true nature of the action types that Kairos has built into it, we have our data handlers. So you can take any element or any sort of text on a screen and throw it into a variable. Right and at the top, we have that create variable functionality. Uh, and using that create variable, you can then later set that variable uh, or verify that variable dynamically as well, right? To ensure consistency across screens. Um, and more importantly for your edge cases, we do also offer execute test case and execute Java as well. And so you have the ability to go ahead and input code there. So we are a low code, no code solution. And you can see that we have a range of action types built in, but if the necessity ever came about, you have the ability to go ahead and input that Java code as well. So let's go ahead and start step building. With our phone connected on the left, and our action type menu on the right, test building becomes really simple. So first we're gonna dive in and select a gesture, and in this case, a tap. After you select your action type, the first thing you have to do is go ahead and enter a step description. In this case, we're gonna click inspect mode button, which is the second button that you see on the screen there on the left. And this is where things become interesting. The next thing you require is a locator and a locator value. And this is where we dive into the first feature of Kairos, inspect mode. Prior to Kairos, testers and developers would have to hunt for those locators and locator values, but with inspect mode, Kairos makes that simple. Just simply hit the toggle to the left and you can see that any element on the screen is then interactable. And when that bounding box is placed, you can see the locator and locator value is actually automatically populated there as well. I can change the color of the bounding box too. You can see I went from red to blue here as well, but more importantly, I can change the available locators there. So I can do a relative XPath and even an XPath by class and you can see the value automatically changing there as well. But to adhere to best practices, let's jump back to an ID. And to continue this test step, this is what I like to call the trifecta. The first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is verify the element. And what that's gonna do is verify the bounding box there on the left, and you can see it turned green, as well as we get our check mark indicator on the bottom. The next step after that is gonna to be to actually execute the test step. When we go ahead and execute the test step, you can see that the screen on the left will go ahead and execute the test step as well. And you can see it happening live. Uh, and more importantly, we have our green check mark indicators at the bottom there as well. And so after you know the test is both functional and the element is the proper element that you're selecting, you can go ahead and push that singular step to the test script there as well. And so let's continue to keep building. The next step again is gonna be a tap. We're actually gonna tap continue here. And so I'm gonna select the tap one more time put in the step description as tap continue. And again, I'm gonna to toggle that uh, inspect mode button for the locator and locator value. We're just gonna select that dismiss button there, verify the element. You can see that that bounding box turns green. When we go ahead and execute that step, you can see the step has gone through and we're at the login menu. And so we're gonna push that to script. And so you can see with the action type menu uh, and the inspect mode that the general step building process becomes very simple and easy. But this kind of takes us to our next process and our next step into this demonstration, which is the recorder mode. An already simple step building process is made even simpler and faster when you think of the recorder mode. So on the left side, you can see the recorder mode toggle. And when we select it, you can see the recorder mode is enabled. And it is exactly as it sounds. Any interaction on the screen is then recorded into a test step. So as you can see, we can click and that's our step one. And as we continue to interact with the screen, we have a range of steps being built. Now, to do sets, we do have a left-click menu. You can see we have set, send text, uh, clear text, as well as verifying elements. You can go back and go home and inspect elements as well. So we have adverse functionality there uh, just from that right-click menu. So here we're gonna go ahead and set. And as you can see, our screen is disabled, but as we enter, you can see the data column on the top right in the action menu is actually being populated. And when we hit enter, here on the screen, um, our phone will then populate our username. 
Similarly, we'll go ahead and set the password. Once again, our phone is on freeze and that's because we're entering data. And so we're gonna enter password. Our data column is then populated. And as we hit enter, the password will then be populated on our mobile device there. We can go ahead and hit next and let's continue step building. As you can see how fast and efficient this is. We'll hit the drop down here and select our favorite superhero. And so we'll go ahead and navigate towards the drop down there, select our favorite superhero, go ahead and select our favorite color there as well in purple. And we'll go ahead and hold this whole text menu. And you can see that we're, we're capturing a, a whole press there as well, not just a regular press, but a long press, I should say. Now, more importantly, let's go ahead and inspect the status element. The status element comes up multiple times in our application. And I, want, I want to verify that it's actually the same every time. And so when we do inspect the element, you can see that the locator and locator value are populated and we can toggle our action types now. So I'm gonna jump into data handlers and actually create a variable for this status type. In the description, we'll call it uh, create status variable. And then our variable name will be exactly that. So we'll go ahead and actually call our variable status here as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in status there. And then we're actually gonna push this to script and go ahead and save our changes immediately after, right? And so that create variable is then saved. Now, while we're doing all this, you gotta keep in mind that we're still in recorder mode. So we can just jump right back to our phone and continue to next step. Go ahead and do a quick uh, swipe here from the top to the bottom there and hit this button here to verify that we've swiped and gotten to the bottom. And you can see once again, we have our another status confirmed. So actually what we're gonna do is inspect element again and I wanna verify that previous status variable that we created to this element. So we're gonna go ahead and go down to our data handlers one more time here in the action types menu. And we're gonna use the dynamic verify. So our step description is gonna be verify status. And then we're asked to enter a data column there as well. And so when we click the data column, you can see that previously created variable status is actually there waiting for us. So we're gonna cl click on status as we previously created it. Go ahead and push that to script as well. And then we can actually continue interacting with the phone and continue our test script. So we're gonna give it a quick click there um, and go over to the next page. Uh, and this is the, the final few entries of our test script here. So we're gonna click mobility as we were doing a mobile test script. You can see the component offering and that's our end-to-end -end business process testing that we mentioned before. Go ahead and enter our nickname, which is gonna be tester123. Lastly, our favorite animal will then be selected. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and pick a giraffe. And here we'll conclude our test. And you can see that we built a 22 test script here very, very efficiently in almost the same time as it took us to build the two steps prior. And so you can see whether your scripts are 10 steps, 20 steps, 100 steps, with this step building process and efficiency, the step building just becomes that much simpler, that much faster, and that much more coordinated. So because we have this 22 step script here, as you can note, um, and we have our phone connected to the left live in a device farm, what we can actually do is scroll to the top and select all of these steps and actually live test them using the phone there. And so as we live test, you can see the phone's gonna go through every single step we just built and one by one execute them. Here, we're gonna go ahead and log in, enter our superhero uh, as we did before, even down to creating the variables and doing those verifications that we input, our live test feature has the ability to do all of that as well. And as our phone runs through it, you can see that we're gonna go ahead and click mobility and end our test script here. Entering our tester123 nickname. Our favorite animal is a giraffe. And as we end on the right, you can see that we have our status codes and we've passed all of our different test scripts, or I'm sorry, test steps. And as you scroll down, anytime we've created a variable, or verify that variable, the actual data element of that variable is then confirmed there as well. So you can see the status confirmed and that's text by text confirmation, character by character, uh, representation of the variable that we created, and then the verification that we did as well. So before we even execute any sort of test scripts, you can see that we can live test our script and ensure that it's functional before we go ahead and execute on a device pool or a range of other devices. Now that we used our live test feature to ensure functionality, the only thing left to do is to execute using a device pool. 
And so that's exactly what I went ahead and did. So as you can see, all three of these executions have been done at the same date and time, and that's because they were triggered simultaneously. One has been done on a Pixel 3, the next on a Galaxy 20, S21 there, and the last on a Pixel 6, as you can note as well. And so using our parallel testing features, we actually executed all of these tests in parallel, and they were executed simultaneously. Also, you can note very quickly that creating JIRA tickets can be done straight from reports. As we mentioned, we do have out-of-the-box configurations, and that's where that would be done. But jumping into the reporting page, you can see that we have a rich reporting page here as well. At the top, you can note our date and timestamp. Underneath that, you have device info and general metrics when you execute, and then pass-fail indicators on the top left. But more importantly is the icons menu on the bottom left there, where you can note that you have a video execution of the test execution. So I can open this video here, um, and when I go ahead and hit play, you can actually note that we're going through our entire test execution as the platform did itself, right? We entered the username, entered the password, all of our different test steps are being recorded um, as the execution is taking place. So we're gonna go ahead and log in. So you have a video of this entire report, right? More importantly, uh, our testing is collaborative in nature. And so you can see you have that download report capability as well as the email report capability. So however you see fit, you can share that with team members and testers alike. Uh, to make sure that everybody is on the same page, keeping testing collaborative as it is in nature. Now, as per the test steps, you can see we have individual screenshots. So here we're entering that username and you can see Kairos is being input there. You can toggle these screenshots on and off, um, but in this case, we have them on for every single test step. And more importantly, anytime we're doing any verifications, those are the expected and actual data results. So the expected data result in the dynamic verification would be the variable that you created prior. Um, and then the actual data result is listed there as well and is as you can see that they're a match. So we have that passing step as well. So you can see not only the robust and rich reporting that's collaborative in nature, but you can see the execution capabilities and the ability to go ahead and execute this test three times simultaneously there with three different devices, right? And that kind of wraps up our demo where we've gone through a little bit of the Kairos test building capabilities, as well as you've seen the execution and the parallel testing, and lastly showing off the robust reporting there as well. So join me and the team as we go through the Q&A in the final part of our Kairos webinar. Hey everyone, thanks again for going through the demo. So we're gonna go ahead and start our QA session. Um, we did get a few questions already. So just to go ahead and accumulate these, let me go ahead and look at these. So you guys had a range of questions regarding pipelines specifically. Um, so just touch on those one more time. So we do actually integrate out of the box with a range of different pipeline tools. What I actually love to say is you guys all know uh, the one ring that ruled them all. It's a Lord of the Rings reference. So we're not the one ring that ruled them all in essence. We do integrate out of the box. Um, and so we have Jenkins, Azure DevOps, Team City, BitRise. Um, we actually have a range of pipeline tools. I can't list them all off the top of my head here, but the links will be provided um, to you as well after this. And then you can look at those on the website also. Um, alongside those pipeline tools, we do have defect management tools as well. So we have Jira and X-Ray out of the box too, uh, which we did mention. You can create those tickets um, straight from the platform. Going through some more of these questions really quickly. Oh, okay. so there's a good one. So what um, devices slash browsers do you support? It's a good question because you do have to talk about devices and browsers. So we do offer uh, web mobile testing. So in essence, you can go ahead and launch a browser uh, on a mobile device, whether that's Chrome, Safari, you name it. Um, and so with devices and browsers, it's fairly agnostic. You can kind of choose uh, which devices and browsers that you want. So we have for devices, a range of Android and iOS. Uh, so we do have uh, private device options. And so you can do previous versions of devices as well as the recent versions. You can do newer beta versions of OSs as well when you pick your devices. Um, and then at that point, it's pretty choice oriented. So you can basically pick which devices you wanna test on. And then browsers as well. So we are a cloud-based platform, spinning up these browsers in second nature. So any browsers that are required are available there as well. Awesome. So 
I think that'll end our, our Q and A session here. I think that was covering most of the the generalized questions and for lack of time. So before signing off, I just wanted to mention we do offer a free trial of Kairos. Um, you can check that out on the website and actually sign up and, and utilize the platform and use it for a few tests there and executions. See exactly how it works and kind of get familiar with it. Um, and then also, if anybody's interested in signing up, please do message Rahul Talker, and that'll be rahult at equinox.com. But we'll also go ahead and provide that email to you um, accordingly. And so all the information that we've gone over today and everything else will be included in a follow-up email. So if you guys want any more information on Kairos to learn a little bit more, please do check that out. Um, thank you all for coming.